All right, I wanna go back into the mixer and uh, let's go into the effects section once again. First thing to note, when you're on the main instrument channel, you have this channel strip with filter, EQ, compressor, gate expander, and the transient shaper. You also have the convolution reverb and the bus compressor. Okay, this bus compressor is kind of emulated after a 9000 series SSL console. So very high quality compressor. However, if I go into, uh, let's actually load another instrument. If we go into the mixer now and we load the other mics, we go into the effects section, we just have that top portion. So we just have the filter EQ, compressor, gate expander, transient designer. We don't have the convolution reverb or the bus compressor. So if you're dealing with individual mics, you will only have this section. If you're on the actual instrument channel itself, then you will have the full set of insert effects to use. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly. There's actually quite a bit of functionality here, and there's some things that may not be readily apparent when you take a look at this initially. So I just wanna cover uh, a few things. We've already talked about the convolution reverb. So let's jump into this effects chain here at the top. So to turn on this channel strip or this effects chain. Basically, you need to engage this input and then we have a gain knob. This is basically the level of the signal going into the channel strip plugin. We can also invert the phase. Now let's go up to the filter. This is basically just high pass, low pass filters. We have all the way up to 500 Hertz. We can roll off. You can see I've lost some of that low end. Now it's back. And of course, we can roll off some of the high end as well. All right, we also have an input button here, which you can see at the very top, we have this process order. This is the order of the processing within this channel strip, and that has an effect on the overall sound as well. So if I disengage the input, you can see now the filters after the EQ. Otherwise, it's gonna be the very first thing right after this input. So you can choose where you want the filter to be applied. Okay, if we move over to the EQ, we have high pass, low pass filters. Let's say go down to about 70, 80 hertz. I can start to roll that off and it's going to be a shelf by default. You can hear we're losing a lot of that low end. Go back to zero. Now there's no change. Now what I can also do is make this a bell. So it's more of a parametric type of EQ and I can maybe boost, let's say 60 hertz. If I want to make that a bigger sound, I can do that as well. Same with the filter at the top here. Or I can also increase that high end as well, or make it a bell curve. So if I want to increase just a very specific frequency, I can do that, or I can actually pull that down. Now with the rest of the EQ, you have your low mid filter, high mid filter. So basically, again, you can select your frequency ranges, you know, increase that frequency, attenuate, change the Q, which is the bandwidth of that adjustment. So here we can disengage or engage the EQ. Now we also have this E button, which will change the EQ from kind of a G series, desk or console type of EQ, which is a little bit less aggressive. The changes you make, it'll be a little bit more transparent. With the E series, it's a little bit more aggressive. So it really kind of just depends on what you're going for. And maybe you can set your adjustments and then switch between the G series and the E series. This is nice because this emulates two very distinct kinds of consoles classic SSL consoles, the G series and the E series.